Hi, I'm Mike Wolpe with Index Ventures, and welcome to Candid with Index. Today, we're very privileged to have Chris Hermson, the co-founder and CEO of Aurora with us, and we're going to talk a little bit about his life and talk about self-driving cars. Welcome, Chris. Cool. Thanks, Mike. So, Chris, cars usually are a big part of a young adult's life. You know, for me, it meant uh, speed, and I loved Formula One. It meant mobility. It meant freedom. What was your first car? So, so my first car was a little blue Escort station wagon. Wow. Yeah, yeah. not exactly speed, is it? No, it wasn't. But my, so my parents had this big yellow Gran Torino station wagon, which had like a big V12 in it. And it was kind of funny because my mother actually liked to show off that it had a V12 <laughs> in it. So it wasn't really my thing, but you know, they would, she still tells stories about how, you know, she'd be at some stoplight and somebody in some sporty car would go next and she'd just put the floor <laughs> down and, and drop them. I so. think your mother and I have a lot of, a lot, lot in common here. Yeah. Um, uh, but you weren't, were you a car guy? No, not really. I'm, I, was, I was much more of a science fiction robots kind of guy. Well, so um, people call you the Henry Ford <laughs> of autonomous driving. People. People call you people that. People call you that. Uh, and, and I know that somewhat embarrasses you when, it, when people call you that. But uh, I, I want to ask you a question about the whole concept of self-driving, because you were involved in the very early DARPA challenges. Was there a moment in time where that switched for you and you felt like this was going to become a technology that everybody would use someday? I think a magical moment for me was when I was at Google, we had um, this gentleman, Steve Mann, uh, who was blind, and we put together just this little video of him early on, uh, you know, about his life and how because he's blind, he's relying on others to get from one place to another. And, you know, he was the director of the Santa Clara Institute of the Blind. He lived down in Morgan Hill and worked up in Santa Clara. And so he had to take public transit. And it was just, it took him two or three hours for something that would take you or me 30, 40 minutes to mm. commute. Mm. And just seeing, this was still very much a demo, right? And it was clearly a demo, but seeing the impact this would have on his life um, was profound. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's it, that was probably one of the moments where I was like, wow, we're, we're doing something really important here. The whole idea of self-driving cars in the public domain has gone through a little bit of this journey where, you know, a couple of years ago, maybe even more than a couple of years ago, enormous amount of excitement, tons of investment, anticipation, uh, promises of the delivery of these systems and so forth. And to be fair, for a few, for the last couple of years, there might have been a little bit of disillusionment, right? Yeah. Promises and timelines and missed and so forth. And in fairness, you've always been uh, super realistic about the time frame on this stuff. So um, recently, there's been a lot of shift in the industry. It feels like maybe we're coming out of that trough of disillusionment a little bit. Um, where, what's your perspective on where we are in this journey to commercialize self-driving technology? Yeah, I, I, it's. It's been an incredible adventure, and we're only just at the beginning. This feels almost honestly as more of a, a manufactured story than reality. So if you, look at, if you look at any industry, there's going to be a period of time where it becomes interesting, and so there's a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm, and I think that's awesome, right? We, we need these, you know, the, the hundred flowers blooming, or, or whatever mm -hmm. the metaphor is. And then, uh, you know, as we've built Aurora, we've tried to create a stable environment where we could bring these great people in and, and, and pull them together to do something. But if you look objectively at the amount of capital that's gone into this space, it's not a clear to me that there's actually been real disillusionment. The, the capital allocation has gone from relatively modest and broad to pretty deep on a few places. And, and, and that's continued even through the, you know, kind of the perceived disillusionment. But we're now at the point where we're going to start to see the, that consolidation that, uh, of, of things continue. Uh, and we're going to start to see the, over the next couple of years, the, the actual commercial deployment of this technology. And it's going to be, it's going to be exciting and it's going to be uh, fun to, to see it really deliver on these promises. Now, what's the, what's the hardest bit? What's still missing from it being a a product that people can use every day. 
Uh, I think, and, and this sounds naive and self-serving as a technologist, but it's, it's still the technology, right? It's, and it's about getting the reliability and robustness of the system to the point where we can deploy it safely. Um, there, there will be challenges um, on the regulatory side. There will be challenges with consumer acceptance. But this technology can mean so much to so many people that we'll get through those. I have confidence. So long as we can get something safe enough on the road, um, you know, it, it's going to go. Okay, so before you founded Aurora, you led the Google self-driving initiative, which was initially called Chauffeur, then it changed its name to Waymo for almost a decade. Um, now that you're Aurora, how is your approach or your philosophy different than what you did back then? With Aurora, it was really, how can we pull together people with great and different experience to really solve this problem? When, when I had the privilege of leading the Waymo team, really, we were the only game in town. And so if you wanted to do self-driving cars, that was the place you went. And you know we were fortunate to have this really strong group of folks that led it to begin with. But we had one philosophy, right, that kind of came through, and and uh, and everybody who joined, you know, we're kind of aligned behind that. With Aurora, we were able to bring together, you know, the experience that I had from from that. We Sterling joined us as the, you know, in founding it and brought the experience from Tesla and from MIT, and Drew brought his experience from Carnegie Mellon and from founding the Uber team you know, together, and then we, we brought in another incredible set of folks. And so that diversity of perspectives, I think, has served as well. The experience and understanding of, hey, this is where the real problems are. How do we invest to solve them? And then, frankly, the way we think about our business, the fact that we were focused on building the driver, and we're not about making the cars, we're not about replacing our partners' businesses, we're about amplifying them. And that model of coming to market to serve our partners and to grow with them and build our business, I think is just a different mindset. And I think that's incredibly powerful as we, as we build our ecosystem and, and you know, see this stuff go do useful things in the world. We talked about Henry Ford earlier. <laughs> um, <laughs> he democratized driving. Yes. Okay. You're trying to do the same thing for self-driving, but you're not building cars. Yeah. So tell us about how you're approaching the partnering dynamic of what's necessary to create the opportunity for me to be driven. Yeah. Um, whether it's partnerships with automakers, partnership with ride hailing companies, and especially now that you've acquired uh, the Uber ATG group. Talk to me about how that works in this modern yeah. world now. Yeah, and so for us, one of our core values is to have focus. Uh, and that's around the technology, but it's also around the way we think of the business model. And so having that partnership enables us to have a great vehicle platform to work with and enables them uh, to bring our technology to serve their customers better. And then on the, on the companies that, that use these, the, the shippers, the carriers, um, for them, they have a shortage of of drivers. So in America, we're short 60,000 drivers. Mm. And in their businesses, they see um, near 100% turnover year on year in their, in their driving staff. And so for them, to the, the shippers and carriers to grow their business, this is the only technology that can do that. And it, and it enables a transformation of their business. So today, a truck driver is limited to drive 10 or 11 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you try to get from Dallas to Los Angeles, say, that's a three-day trip. Whereas with the technology we're developing with the Aurora driver, that's a one-day trip. And so the networks that these folks use for moving goods through the world transform and allows them again to, to think like, is, is air really the right answer here or do we put in a truck and get it there basically in the same time? Yeah, yeah. So it's just an incredible value creation for them and, and that'll ultimately serve their customers because goods will get there more safely, it'll get there more quickly. On the people moving side of our business, again, it's, you know, we, we're partnered with Toyota, one of the well, the world's number one auto manufacturer, we can help provide the, the self-driving capability to them. They can think about how do they use these vehicles to serve customers. They can think about how they can bring their financing arm and service resources to help provide a basically a car as a service kind of model. Uh, and then we work with, with Uber, who we're, we've got a, a close partnership with, uh, to help them grow their business. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it allows them 
to help expand from what's a, basically a $35 billion market today to ultimately the trillion dollar transportation market for, for moving people through throughout North America. Uh, and it'll allow them again to offer ultimately a more consistent, a safer service for, for their customers. So I think that's a, just an incredible opportunity across the ecosystem. Yeah. Now, one of the things that's unique about the, the leading players in this business is that Aurora is the only independent company. Yeah. Um, is that a good thing for you? Is it a bad thing for That's you? It's a terrible thing, and Mike. Why? Terrible. <laughs> no, uh, no. I think it's a great thing. I, I think it, it again, as I think about building an ecosystem, it's great to know that your partner is not trying to ruin your business, yeah. right? Uh, and so we're set up to help our partners grow. Whereas if you look at um, our competitors, uh, they kind of make no bones about wanting to own the whole stack, mm. right? Yeah. And as I think about bringing the Aurora driver to market, if I had to build a shipping network on top of the driver, that just increases the complexity of my business. And I'm probably not as good at it as a company that's been doing it yeah. for, for decades. Um, in moving people through the world, Uber has invested untold billions of dollars to build a network and, and to have the brand, have the, the supply of of drivers and have the supply of rides and and if you try to replicate that from from zero it's it's going to be incredibly mm. capital intensive and very difficult and so i think by partnering with them uh we'll actually be able to build a better product and we'll end up actually having a better business and have a bigger impact in the world because of that chris you know you're obviously you gave that famous ted talk back in 2015 i think and you're known as a technologist but Every time I talk to you, and uh, you know, I hear this from all the folks that work at Aurora, what you care a lot about is leadership style and culture in your organization, uh, almost m more than you care about the technology in some ways. It's, it's strange to say that. <laughs> but um, you, know, you got these interesting Aurora rules, which is you mentioned one focus, yeah. no jerks is the other yep. one that you guys talk about a lot. Give us a sense of that. First of all, why do you think it matters, and what are your cultural principles that you hold so dear? Yeah, I, I think that what we're trying to do as a company is incredibly difficult. And, it, and it's not, and, and unfortunately, it's not a technology, it's not a type of product where we can kind of throw it together in three months, get it out in the public, iterate on it and see, right? It's a many year investment. And so in building Aurora, it was clear that we hadn't couldn't just build the technology, we had to build the company to support it. And again, it's also complicated enough that it's not five guys in a basement, right? It's it's this diverse collection of people. You know, we're at 15, 1,600 people today. Uh, and so that means that you have to think hard about how are those people going to work together? Uh, how are we going to sustain um, through the difficult period of time where we don't get that excitement and enthusiasm from having the product in the market? And so that comes from having a very clear mission of what we're on. It's to deliver the benefits of self-driving technology safely, quickly, and broadly and then a set of values by which we expect people to operate. And so that kind of meta part of it, I think, is, is gonna be a key to our success. And, and one of the things I've learned through the years is that almost every problem is a people problem. That it's how do you get, you know, whether it's trying to get two bits of technology to come together and work, it's, it's gonna come down to the people working on those and implementing them. Do they mm -hmm. trust one another? Um, do they respect one another? Can they communicate effectively so that they're not speaking past one another? And so as we think, thought early about the values for Aurora, it was really, how do we set up the, the DNA of the company so that we'll get there? And so things like this core value of no jerks um, is, is, is about supporting that, that this is too big for one person to solve, so you're gonna have to work with others. You know, setting outrageous goals is, fundamentally we're solving a problem that hasn't yeah. been solved before, right? It is ambitious. And so we have to have the appetite to go and do that if we're going to be successful. On that thread, you know, this is a technology that's been taking a long time to develop and to commercialize. And how do you keep people focused for that long journey? Yeah, I, I, it, it's hard, right? Um, I think that it comes down to um, a few things. So one is just, again, back to how you set things up. And when I, when I talk to people we're hiring, I talk about the fact that I believe we have to give them a mission they can believe in, and then we have to create an environment where it's great to work, whether that's the people and the role that they have, because the mission 
matters, right? That That's what gets you through the hard days. Because it doesn't matter how good the company is, it doesn't matter what you're doing, some days are going to suck. And so there needs to be a mission that, that pulls you through that. But if most days suck, then it doesn't matter how good the mission is, and so you're gonna go find something else to do. So you need both of those. And then along the way, it's finding things to celebrate and acknowledging the successes we have and, and putting, as much as we can, concrete milestones in front of people so you can feel like, yeah, we haven't actually got to the finish line yet, but we got past the next mile marker. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, Chris, thank you for working on this incredible problem. I, I was uh, thinking about it this morning, and, and this is probably the funnest project that I've ever had a chance to be part of in my professional career. So. Wow. It's been a real privilege for me. Thank you for that. Oh, thanks, Mike. For, for the guy who created all the stuff that powers the internet, you know. Oh, this, like, this is fun. This is pretty this cool. This has been great fun. Okay, so speaking of fun, now we're moving on to the competitive section of our Candid with Index. <sighs> okay, so here we are with Chris. Uh, our little competitive game involves RC cars. Uh, we have a track laid out here with cones. Uh, we're going to try to see, on a timed run basis, who can get through the course the quickest. One catch. Every cone we hit is a one second deduction, or a one second addition, I should say, to your time. <laughs> so uh, it'll be a tough competition. I know this, is, uh, this isn't easy for us pros, but uh, Chris, I think you're up first. Are you ready for serious. this? serious. I'm ready. On your mark, get set, go. Oh, yeah. Ah! Nice work, Chris. That's pretty good. Oh, well, I was going to say. Oh. oh. Two cones? Two, one? What two, was that? I think I, two. Two. I think I feel like two. Two, one, two? I, okay. I, I think it's two. Two cones. We've agreed. I was I felt, I felt pretty good about that. Yeah. You were, you were like giving yourself a pat on the back halfway, about halfway through I the was, run. and then I went all the heck. I feel like you got a flat tire. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, the self-driving expert, crushed me on the actual driving test. So now we're going to have him do it blindfolded. OK, Chris, ready? Oh, yeah. Let's okay, do this. OK, go. OK, here we straight, go. Straight, straight. No, 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 left, 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 little left, little left, little left, little more left, 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 more straight. Right, 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 straight, no, right, left, 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 <laughs> left. Are you saying random things? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, left and straight, no, like forward and left. Keep going, you're good, you're good. Yeah, that's close enough. Straight it out, straight it out. No, no, right, 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 left, left, <laughs> left, left, left. I think, I don't know which is left and right. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Much as I've always felt that I was a superior driver, I do have to concede we lost this one. Chris, well done. All that training worked out for you. Congratulations. Thanks, Mike.